in several countries of the former Soviet Empire. And so Czechs had to, some protested against the emperor. Uh, they had to flee and go to North America. So that was the first wave that was political. And then others started to follow also for economic reasons, especially from the uh, regions outside of towns when uh, land was scarce and when the family had 10 children, they needed um, uh, land to be able to find their families. Uh, and so they left for North America and they started to grow. Um, so in the 1870s, it was a mass uh, immigration already. And over time, Chicago became uh, the second largest Czech town after Prague. It was kind of the center. So the Midwest was, that was the, at the time, the area where the Czechs would be coming. And then uh, at some point, uh, Midwest already was also taken. People were leaving, especially Czechs were in Nebraska, Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, uh, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. And then and Oklahoma was the last one to open. A few went there also, from Nebraska, especially in Iowa. And then, of course, the last West West came. Um, so some of the children and grandchildren of the first Czech immigrants to, to, to the US started to go to uh, Canada. Upon the invitation of the government, they also were able to get land. This was the, so the first trip to this area that I know of came from Shelby, uh, Montana. Probably all Czech immigrants that already moved there from Minnesota or North Dakota. Yeah. And so they did bankers, they arrived here and began to work the mine lines. The Czech was able to Slovak and Czechs. Do you know what year that was for in, sure? In, uh, this is when I read in the books, 1885. That was 1885, sir. Mm -hmm. And all the way up to the 20s and the 30s, 1920s and 30s? Yes, and okay. so, so that was, and at the, at the time I read that about in the west of Canada, it was about uh, one third coming from continental Europe, mostly the Central and Eastern Europe people, <coughs> and one third of people was coming from the US, and then from United Kingdom, the last third. So I would say that we had Czechs coming both from the US, Czech Americans, and then from Europe. And so I understand Mr. Mayor is the part that came directly from Bohemia, from the Czech Republic. My, my grandfather. Yes, uh, and uh, he was over here in the 20s, uh, two or three times, I believe, and my grandmother finally came over uh, uh, sometime after when he was here already. So my grandfather came on his own. He was never here with his wife. Uh, he, he would work a couple of years and go back, kind of thing. But uh, I think at least at least three times, I believe, he was here for several years all told, working in the Lethbridge area. And then again, my grandmother finally came over in, uh, sorry, that's that's my great grandfather. Sorry, would have come over originally, and uh, my grandmother and grandmother met while they were here, both uh, uh, Czech background. And, and as I said, my uh, my grandfather was killed in that the 1935 mine disaster in Kohlers, where the 16 miners were killed in that uh, that uh, unfortunate disaster back then. And uh, even today, that's well. That is the the absolute worst mine disaster in this area. There are, are worse disasters uh, across uh, the country and uh, the USA and elsewhere, but but this is definitely the worst in this particular area. So a lot of history of that. The mining was big here in Tabor and area, uh, Lethbridge, Kohlers. Um, back in the day, there was also the railway. A lot of working, you know, the immigrants worked with the railway, as did my uh, my great grandfather. For a time there, as well as the mines there. So at the time, things were that was just after World War II, right? Or sorry, World War One ended rather. And uh, so that was a, a, a tough time. Things were tough over in Europe there as well. And so people were coming over here looking for work and better lives. And, and uh, a lot, a lot of Europeans did end up immigrating. In fact, that's that's what uh, Southern Alberta uh, and Alberta as a whole is really based on immigration over the years, right? Yeah. Here. That's your background too, right? You're, you're, exactly, yeah. You have a Czech background yourself. Yeah, <laughs> sort of all Eastern Europe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's it's huge here. It's uh, and it's really interesting that uh, uh, Ambassador Eliza was able to get a hold of me and, and through uh, uh, Katerina's way of checking into the uh, history and 
saw Tabor and the spelling and, and my name is part of Tabor here in, in my role here. <laughs> and uh, oh, the MLA Grant Hunter is here with us. <laughs> Welcome. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. 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 Yes, sir. Welcome. Thank Ambassador you. Liza, can they? Great to see you. Grant Thank you very much for coming. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I was just talking here to the Tabor yeah. Times. So yeah, you know, how are you doing? I actually haven't met you yet. Yeah, it's nice so to meet you. great to meet you too. <laughs> so grab a chair, Grant. We're just in the middle of the chair. Thank you for coming. Why don't you sit here? Hey, I'll pull no, up the no, chair. No, sit here. Sit here. All right. I'll get you this chair. Here. So, so we really appreciate this, this view finding the time and joining us today. Sure, I actually will cool. be able to get back a little bit sooner. So. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Grant, Grant was just at a, uh, a Hunter Ed Colony tour of Bo Bo Island area, right? Just south of Bo south Island, uh, Shamrock Colonies there. So yeah. they wanted to show me their automation in terms of um, uh, their layers. So, oh, is um, that right? <laughs> yeah, egg, egg production. So if anybody wants eggs, I've got a, I've got a dozen out there in my car. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're the freshest Perfect. Yeah, 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 no doubt about that. That's great. Right. <laughs> well, thank you for being here for this as well. Yeah. Uh, and Grant, Grant Hunter's been great. Uh, he, he's a great uh, uh, advocate for Tabor and area and uh, the province as a whole. I'd like to take, talk Grant up any chance I get to. Thank but you. uh, <laughs> you're very welcome. But it's very, very uh, justifiable and very deserving because he's been a great asset for uh, the, the entire province, but particularly for the constituents in his area here. And uh, he does uh, more than look after us in many different ways. And we can't thank him enough. For all he does for us, so and it's been a pleasure to work with with uh, Grant and our council, and uh, as a result, we've become become uh, great friends as well there. So not just in the political circle, but <laughs> actually, Joe's Joe's wife is my assistant. That's I've been right, my assistant for six years. So, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll never find a better uh, a better assistant and a better person. So she, Absolutely. if you've never met Angela, you. You haven't yet? No, I'm very new. I know you're new. I know you're new. <laughs> so you'll have to beat her for sure. Um, I always say that if I don't have an answer, Angela has the answer. So. <laughs> That's yeah, a good answer. You could probably quote me on that too. <laughs> yeah, and, my and Joe knows this as well, right? <laughs> she answers all my questions. Too. <laughs> yeah, and my editor came up to me and was like, yeah, we have a Czech ambassador and the MLA and maybe the MP are coming. So. You have to go interview them, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so you got to be on your best yeah. behavior. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, no, we, we will make it easy for you. <laughs> Very good. But no, back to the history, like we're just kind of getting into some of the historical uh, uh, Czech background, and that's, uh, that's a lot of what they're interested in seeing here and have seen already. So it's going back to 1885, where that's kind of all started here. And the immigration is huge in, in Alberta, right? And Canada as a whole, but Alberta in particular. So uh, that's really what's built this country overall, right? Absolutely, immigration. So, and you I, know, I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say um, it's interesting. I just finished uh, a book on the history of the Hutterites, and they actually hail back to Czechoslovakia. Someone told me that uh, well, the, during this trip, they mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. maybe made a former prime minister hug. <laughs> oh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they they come back from the the Anabaptist movement, mm -hmm. and that actually originated right in the Czechoslovakia area, and then they progressively went uh, north till they ended up in Russia. Then they came back into Germany, and then they migrated to South Dakota, and mm -hmm. from South Dakota they came up to Alberta. Yeah. So they mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they do it paper in South Dakota. So we yeah. Know that. Yeah. So then they yeah. came up to Alberta, and actually Alberta has the largest concentration of Hutterites um, in the world. I never heard about it. Yeah. I feel ashamed because I'm, I'm very into this story. I'm trying to write a book as well. Are you? I have to find, find your book. And you know what? <laughs> we'll make sure we can connect in terms of our phone numbers, and then I will yes, tell sure. you about the book. It was given to me by uh, uh, the, the, the head <laughs> preacher. And you know what? I apologize, but I do not have uh, mine. I, I'm getting. I, I'm, I'm out of. I'm out of. Uh, you have cards. I'm out of uh, the process, you know, because of 15 months of being all the way. It's just nice to be able to shake hands again. I, yeah, <laughs> it's not too yeah. 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 I was meeting family so happy. I forgot the previous card. Is right? this card from my wallet? Kind of <laughs> older. Well, this so is like, something, yeah. <laughs> but I got the I got oh, the book from the preacher from the New York Colony, which is also in my writing. 
You know the New York Colony? That's yes. just yep. what you probably yeah. do as well, yeah. right? Yeah. In fact, you took me there, didn't you? No, not to the New York. Not to the New York. We went to uh, Midland, Oak Way, and Midland. Oh. Or, uh, no, we didn't go to Oak Way. Lake Midland, um, Hill Ridge, and, 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 and uh, Lakeside. Lakeside. Yeah, 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 I know the, right. the, uh, the yeah. boss down there, Jim. Yeah. You met Jim? Yeah. 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 So, for sure. Very prominent colony. But no, back, back to Tabor and the name. It's, uh, that, that's some of what, what uh, they were researching there coming out this way. And uh, saw Tabor itself. That's near Cranford. Cranford another big location where they had a lot of immigration there right to Cranford. And uh, just saw some photos that you, you brought up there showing just that celebration way back in, in Cranford itself there. So it's uh, quite a lot there. And Tabor itself, we can't seem to find that check connection necessarily for Tabor's name, right? So, but uh, but Tabor in Czech, I think it was telling you, T-A-B-O-R, is huge in Czech. It's like about 35,000 population now. Wow. And it started in the uh, 1400s, I think it was. Yeah, it was and, and at that time, there was some big revolution of sorts, and the Prokop name was a general then and was part of the... Uh, was Uprising. Okay? He was part of the uprising. No, he was one of the several. Men. Yeah. And at the same time, a great warrior. Yes, there you go. Any better than that? Right? <laughs> you know, so, you know, you can run with that, yeah. <laughs> but it's quite a story. I had no idea there was a Tabor in, in Czechoslovakia either until we spoke about that. So Sounds this, to me like you guys need to be sister cities. Well, you know, we talked about that also, yeah. actually. This, so, is this my, my today? Something that we we're not done talking about that possibility either. So, we're <laughs> <laughs> lots of possibilities on the table here, I think. For and then it's a Czech paper in South Dakota. I don't know if, if, if you came across that, but it was founded by Czech immigrants. Mm -hmm. The Czech town yeah. for many decades it remained the Czech town because it was neatly isolated somehow. And, and so, people still speak their Czech when I came there. Is that right? Which is yeah. now more than 100 years. It's all, years, it's all like based that. on the name Tabor that was originated in the 1400s in Czechoslovakia itself. So that's why the significance there. Yeah. It's, it's a prominent name there. And, and since we talked about origin, it may be interesting for you, for that other movement. Maybe it's somehow connected. Um, I wanted to tell you that, because I realized that in Krakow, I, um, the movement that was led by <laughs> the same name, yeah. uh, General, um, he um, started with the Czech reformist. He wanted uh, religious equality, and he came uh, 100 years before Martin Luther, uh, the German reformist, and he was burned at stake in Germany. This kind of fueled his uprising in Bohemia and Moravia against, uh, uh, and kind of generally, generally against it, uh, uprising, and then. Um, this uprising lasted, defended itself for 15 years against mass and armies that were marching into Bohemia to crush it. They were able to crush it, thank, thanks to the general. <laughs> and then, uh, what is interesting is that this movement, of course, ultimately Bohemia was is independent in 1620. And so this religious freedom that we, that we preserved till then was also crushed in 1620 by the Habsburgs. And um, those uh, people who were following this church uh, left, left Bohemia in ma on a mass mm -hmm. scale. And one of the things that they created was a church called, which became then known in North America as Moravian Church. So there is a Moravian church in Hamburg, for example, still standing. Okay. Yep. And it's also big in North America, I think, in the US. And so it's kind of, this is just maybe that some people know the Moravian Church. It's in the Caribbean. Yes, it's everywhere around. Right. It was yeah. founded by the Czech immigrants, wow. and, and so it's in 1700 already. Czechs actually arrived in 1700 to, to Canada as the missionaries for this for this church. Okay. Yeah. So that's maybe what most people <coughs> know about Albert. I think it was more the East Coast and Labrador, but, Labrador, I think, was the first mission. Just another question back to the 1400s. This general Prokop you refer to. He was he was one of like was he third in line did you tell me or something like uh, was he third in line or something to that, that because movement? the the first was the reformist who was burned yeah and that only started the rebellion because mm -hmm. before he was just like Charles and the people he actually reformed our language also mm -hmm. he introduced if you see my name there is a sign over my heart that was okay. invented by the reformists in the 1400s the poles don't have that so you have yeah, if, if you want. 
want to say ch in Polish, you put cz. And in Czech, if you want to say ch, you put the side of a c. This was very mm -hmm. formal in our okay. country, okay. of our language. So, and then we had a, the leader of the, of the army that we had, of the Hitman, was uh, called Jan Žiška. And when he was killed, this general took off my hand. Oh, I see. Okay. That's a lot of history going back to the 1400s, that's unreal. <laughs> and the history has been, I mean, it's, it's, it's rich in history back then. I mean, you've got the, the, the Turks on the east side, um, you know, you've got the Roman Empire on the west side, so there's got rich history in that area. Yes, yes. it's just very interesting. But it's right in the middle. <laughs> and yeah. so it was always at war, it seems. So, right. yeah. Yeah. so there would have to be great generals that kind of came out of it. Because they're always at war. Yeah, no doubt. But <laughs> because also a small nation like us, so, so yeah. 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 in between yeah. Russia, between Germany and things like that. So, but, but back to our history here. <laughs> no, because I owe you that answer. So in what is what I'm here discovering, uh, our um, there was a professor in, in Czechoslovakia who taught the Czech Republic at that time in Slovenia, um, who uh, during when the First World War broke out decided that the Czechs were sent to fight in a war against Serbs, which were Slavs as well, and then they, they saw no point in the war. It was just because the emperor wanted the war, so. He said, okay, enough with the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I'm going to exile and I'm going to create a new country. Uh, so he went and he started to search for how to do that because he had no country, no, he was no politician, nothing. And, but he lectured at the University of Chicago before and he found out that there is a huge diaspora in America, second largest town of Chicago. But not only there, he, he traveled to Nebraska, and uh, even he knew that we reached to Canada. So yeah. then, when he was in exile, he sent envoys and letters to these communities and asked them to fundraise for him, to go enlist into the Czechoslovak army, first Czech, then Czechoslovak, because he then, both of us decided that he would join us. And then, uh, so this, this, this movement basically paid for all the campaign. Uh, we, were, we had an army of 80,000 people in Russia, which uh, controlled the Trans-Siberian Trans Railway. So we became an important power for the US and for the Allies, because we were controlling half of Russia through our army. So even though we didn't have a state, we had an army. And right. that was significant for the Allies. Uh, so the Czechs from Canada, from the US, went to fight either in the Canadian army or in the Czechoslovak army on the Western Front, and they fundraised and so on. So this was hugely important for, for our national history. And now when I was in, in uh, Crown's Nest, they showed me some pictures how they celebrated the Czech communities there, how they celebrated the creation of Czechoslovakia, and also how they campaigned for it. And um, so then came the, the what we won in the first, First World War, the Allies won, Czechoslovakia was created. It was a huge celebration. Some Czech Americans really moved, the Czech Canadians moved back, then they, they were returning and so on. And in 20 years, their dream was crushed. Suddenly, everything was gone. And of course, they were very sad. And at the same time, in about two weeks after Germany invaded Czechoslovakia, they declared we will do it again under the leadership of the new president who also was part because the old president died in 37. And they support, it was also at the University of Chicago, Canadian delegation of Czechs from Canada came to Chicago to pledge support to him. And they created 91 branches of Czech and Czechoslovak Association of Canada, which also began to fundraise began to send soldiers into Czechoslovak army and Canadian army. And also from this area, so the branches were in Lembridge, Brentford, uh, and uh, then both systems view, Crown's Nest, the Crown Hill area, Crown Hill, of course, and Monson. Right. And um, so many, many of these branches were in, in, uh, in Alberta. 
and and that because the community grew even more during the between the wars, right? right. Like there yeah. was this this was another big push. Sure. Uh, so the community was bigger than during the First World War, and the same support in the Second World War was, mm. was even more significant. And our president came to Ottawa uh, in exile. That was not Czechoslovakia, but he was welcomed by Mackenzie King like a president with all honors. He, 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 he yeah. spoke at the parliament. Uh, Mackenzie King expressed his support for the creation of Czechoslovakia. And, uh, and then of course came the Second World War, which you asked me about after the Second World War. And in three years, our country fell into the Soviet sphere of influence. So people again began to leave and Canada again opened its doors in 48 and 68 to Czech immigrants. Uh, so they also Bruce uh, would still speak Czech because they came and then were born in, in uh, Czechoslovakia. And uh, so I met with, uh, as I said, former Prime Minister Hartler and with Michel Rembergard, who is of Slovak ancestry. And um, we both, we, we all agree that if it wasn't for the 40 years of communism in Czechoslovakia, today we would be much more in touch. We would have the Sister Cities partnership already, but right. this 40 years was a huge break, unfortunately, which I'm yeah. kind of, this is why I'm here, I'm kind of trying to rediscover and reconnect, and um, I hope this will be possible. Well, I think it's got a lot of great possibilities, right? <laughs> 100%. Actually, so there's another thing that I want to ask. You said you have a former Prime Minister Harper. Um, so are there other places that you're planning to travel in? Are still active catering, or where have you been? Or what have you been? There's an interesting curiosity, just on the side, that uh, the chief of staff of Prime Minister Harper <coughs> during his time as Prime Minister was Czech Canadian, Ray Novak. Uh, so that's also an interesting connection. Okay, and, uh, yes. and Prime Minister Harper told me a very nice story that he learned what does it mean freedom, uh, and what it means when you lose freedom from a Czech immigrant who was his family friend and when he was growing up. So there are some nice and talking about one more thing when we get to the future. Uh, Prime Minister Harper was of course instrumental in creating the CETA agreement, uh, the partnership agreement in trade between Europe and Canada. Right. And this partnership agreement was launched in Prague at the key EU Canada summit. So it was his, his historic visit to the Czech Republic. I'm not sorry back to your question. Yeah. If I am going with still, yes. So I'm going uh, I'm going doing kind of this circle tour. Um, I started in Calgary, uh, went to this this crown nest area uh, here. I'm going to uh, Drumheller, uh, Prague Viking area, Prague capital city of the Czech Republic. Interesting. When I was telling you at the beginning how Czechs were getting here, right? Prague. I, I think this. I think funny line that which is totally true that. Uh, Usually these cities with Czech names are founded by someone who came from the town, right? So if you are in Prague, you find in Canada Prague. But in this case, it was the same idea. But it wasn't people from Prague from the Czech Republic, but Czechs from Prague, Oklahoma. Oh, yes. Oh, so, oh, wow. <laughs> so this is the origin. As I told, many Czech Americans were coming to Canada to see the country. Um, so, and then I will finish in Edmonton. Uh, Trip, but uh, we have um, a lot of ties today. I wanted to talk about it anyway, so I hope I mentioned sure. something to yep. you. We have um, in, in business, of course, I hope that we can do a lot. And we have in research and development, we have a program uh, between Alberta and Czech Republic. The Czech companies and Canadian companies and research researchers can apply for grants now annually. Uh, and we, we call we do these call for applications, so there is interesting possibility for, for techniques. I'm also trying to advertise this so people know about that program. And of course we have European programs. So if we include, for example, more European countries, then we have even a huge program, which is called Horizon Europe, uh, which is billions of dollars uh, funds. And Canada is just joining that as an associated member and has already pledged funds before, so it already works. So if we have more countries from Europe and Canada, we have really uh, almost endless resources available for supporting uh, innovation. Um, yes, and um, I'm also uh, hoping, of course, for uh, even even to some uh, education exchanges, students, professors, that would be great, cultural exchanges, and we have security cooperation. Uh, our soldiers serve under Canadian command in Latvia where we together protect uh, Baltic states from possible Russian threat, which is coming, mm -hmm. uh, NATO, mm -hmm. very, very important. Uh, Czech company 
NHL sport called Canada, called US. Oh, is that uh, right? This, uh, like this year? This, yes, like right? two months ago or one month ago, it was wow. completed. So we got it back. So uh, it's always it's been a US chain, no? Owned by? No, owned by Czech. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a Czech uh, firearms company, which I understand is quite popular in Alberta. It's called CZ, yeah. CZ Group. Česká zbrojovka. By the way, which helped finance also resistance during Second World War because they had assets in North America which they used and they turned them. So there is, as I said, we are, but for the Czechs also, I'm trying to present this also in the Czech Republic. Right. I made, made a short documentary last year for our National Day celebration, which is on YouTube. So I find this on National Day, you can watch it. All right. And um, so there is. It's, it's incredible for us that on the other side of the planet, we have this peace and place where there yeah. are little concentrations of Czech history and people. This, this is the amazing thing about Alberta and Canada and even the United States, is that we are a, a melting pot mm -hmm. of cultures that have come together. And you know, it's an exciting thing. I was just talking to the Hutterites there, and, and we are talking about this immigration, how people have ended up here. They, they came here because there was opportunity here. Mm -hmm. That's right. They, they, they yeah. you know, lots of them left their places because of religious persecution. Mm -hmm. uh, they were looking for freedom in terms of freedom of, of religion, freedom of, of worship, and freedom of, of conscience. And and this has been, it's been an experiment. Right. An yeah. experiment uh, like none other in the world. And that's what we've, we've seen here. Um, but this is a place where from, my grandpa came from Donegal, Ireland. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not even, I'm a third generation here of, of, of someone that's, just, that's settled here. Well, my grandpa, he came with his brother. They had not 25 cents to, 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 between the three of them. Yeah. Um, on my mom's side, uh, her, her father uh, was Mennonite, which we have a large Mennonite population down here as well. Uh, and the Mennonite uh, history is very intertwined with the Hutterite uh, history as well. And they also came from the Anabaptist movement um, that came out of that uh, Czechoslovakia area. Um, and so lots of interesting, I didn't know any of this information until I read this book, but but um, I'm actually, I just gave it to the Premier to read, uh, to ask him to read. But I was gonna say, if you're not gonna, you gotta come to the Calgary Stampede. Which it starts next week. I, I actually, I was the greatest surprised. outdoor show on earth. It is. It is uh, <laughs> we, we kind of uh, we talked about it at COVID. Yeah. So they destroyed everything. And I am trying to. I, I jumped at the first opportunity. We know opportunity open. So I took a flight and I knew. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, didn't even investigate what those days. So yeah, I was trying to find the Czech Republic later. But we, don't, we are trying to do that too because Michelle and Mariana also well, that would be great uh, to just stayed on me going. So, <laughs> no. so I, you I, I rearranged yeah. something the problem. I may finish in Calgary on the 9th okay. before my departure. Okay, good. How many days are you there? Well, I'm there for the full 10 oh, days. Yeah, okay. as, as ministers, yeah. we are. We have to be there. So, um, But you need, to, you need to come. And then if you're there, uh, give me a call. And I'll make we'll exchange yeah. numbers, like I said. And, uh, and then we can maybe uh, maybe try to get you in this grandstand show. A grandstand, grandstand show is, is the most amazing thing. And you need to buy a Stetson. <laughs> the white Stetson. A, cow, a cowboy oh, hat. It is the, white. This yeah. is the, the white Stetson. I'm quite into it. I'm very into cowboy uh, culture. There you go. Well, it's incredibly popular in the Czech Republic over spread. We have our country music. Ooh, that's and, great. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, and I think from the first Czechoslovak, because it was first Czechoslovak Republic, our constitution was inspired by the US constitution. Yeah. The mm -hmm. culture, the music, yeah. everything was very popular. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, I think that Stetson, I would be very, uh, <laughs> even very successful in the Czech Republic. Well, you just have to pick a date. You cannot pass up an invite like that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Have any more specific questions? Yeah, actually, I think really the last sort of specific one is sort of, I guess this is for I, I, you and your uncle, grandpa, and Auntie Ustra. So, sort of, in terms of you being here in Tabor and, you know, uh, um, maybe in like sister cities of the Czech Tabor as well, uh, sort of, I guess, what does that, like, what does that mean in terms of opening 
I stuck between or even southern Alberta or Alberta or Canada as a whole and just sort of opening that communication line. Well, I guess, like I said before, I think there's some great possibilities here. It's, uh, of course, this would have to come before council officially. But, uh, as you know, right now, myself, uh, Councilor Stravas and, and Minister Hunter is uh, all over that as, as far as a benefit and nothing but, but uh, great possibilities, I think, and we would look forward to any possibilities and or options that are out there that can uh, uh, enhance any uh, uh, partnership or or sister city format like we've, we've been involved before, as you were with the, the guest show me. So uh, we're certainly not uh, prone to, to do something like that and as a possibility. And I think it's got some great possibilities, as I say, for, for future reference. And I think you have to keep an open mind and explore those possibilities, right? Yeah. Well, culturally and, and historically, we, we have a lot in common with that area. So yeah, it's, oh, exactly, it's yeah. really open here. You know, uh, the advent of, of, of Pilsner beer came. came <laughs> <laughs> I actually was in Pilsner. So perhaps what we need is we need a connection to get a great brewmaster here in our little brew pub here in Tamer. <laughs> no, you can buy a huge keg there. <laughs> you know, it all starts with me. This is this is a great start for the actual in-person visit here, and this is great that it's worked out this way, and we're happy to have you and uh, thrilled that you're able to be here. So I think just a matter of uh, official letters uh, back and forth for any possible options there to consider. And uh, like I said, keeping an open mind and yeah. you can open the door. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the door is always open in the Tabor area, so yeah. consider that. It's, uh, our home is your home. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just think that the, I'm really impressed in, in by this, how warmly I'm, I'm received here by, by all of you. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're I always welcome. I didn't take that for granted. It's just, it's just really special. And in general, I feel this wonderful friendly atmosphere here and also Alberta in general mm -hmm. and and uh, so I look forward to coming back also and I'm thinking generally I think these sister cities especially as mayor said I think can be an interesting tool how to keep more intense communication how to come up with more ideas projects that then mm -hmm. can inspire someone if they, if they want to go somewhere and I'm, I'm thinking that I am now going to the Czech Republic after two years because of COVID, it's my record in my life. <laughs> and um, I, I, I am thinking that I would uh, probably travel to the Czech paper and tell them about this possibility and also try to talk to them. And maybe there you go. No, absolutely. We look forward to that. You know, it's culturally, educationally, business potential, it's all here. So, I mean, it's just a matter of uh, putting those type of things together and, and uh, looking to see what's, what's out there as possibilities, right? And uh, with those kind of connections and our supports, great things can happen. And I would love to have the delegation from Tamer. To We'd love to get there. Yeah, that would yeah. be great. Is there anything anyone else wants to say on the record? Or is that pretty much everything? Anything else? Well, well, I want to welcome you uh, from the province. Uh, I want to welcome you here. And I'm glad that you were able to come to, to one of the best places in the world, right here in Southern Alberta. Um, at some point, you'll have to come back when we have our Tabor Corn Fest, uh, which is uh, a yeah, free event, that, yeah. <laughs> and it has uh, all the the most exciting, wonderful corn you'll ever eat. Uh, you can eat the corn on the cob without any butter, without any salt, mm -hmm. and because it's freshly picked that day, and it is the best you'll ever Absolutely. taste. Absolutely. Sweetest corn in the, the world. And, yeah. and, and I like corn. Yeah, and my, 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 my wife as well. When I was grieving, it's because of the sunlight we get that it brings out the sugars in the corn. Mm -hmm. Well, really, all, it, all it, the growing possibilities. It's the warm yeah. days and cool nights Thanks. that develop the, the sugar yeah. content mm -hmm. in, in the corn. You know? But it's, it's all crops. We're real well, benefit here for specifically. Yeah, corn is one. It's a big one for sure. But we got a lot of great crop possibilities here, and the, the results speak for themselves. So I mean, we're very lucky with the soil content. Hours and uh, of course the irrigation is key. That's our saving grace in this country. Dry land is always a bit of a gamble that way. They certainly try it every year, but this this year's not great at all. In fact, it's terrible right now. But it's um, the uh, the irrigation is what saves us in this country, and it's roughly 80% in this area that's irrigated a lot. 
So that's that's the bonus and the the, uh, the benefit that we're all all able to receive as a result from the growers to uh, anybody that's uh, involved with uh, the uh, the planting, etc., and or the economic spinoff beyond that. So it's farming is big here. It's, it's farming and oil in the last. Uh, 40 years, I guess, or so, uh, has been huge here. So, uh, but farming has always been our, our staple. If, if the oil industry suffers, it's farming always picks it up. And uh, that's really, again, our saving grace here because it was here. So we're very fortunate in many ways in this particular area. And uh, Minister Grant Hunter can tell you the same thing as far as what's been uh, authorized for this 200,000 plus. No, I was going to talk to you about that in, um, yeah, when we go for lunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so we'd love, love to be able to tell you about the exciting things we've been doing here in Smith for a while. So thank you so much. Yeah, there's lots of things on the horizon. The Tabor, Tabor Times already knows about that. So yes, we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just to reiterate, we can certainly discuss that, but that's that's some exciting news that, that uh, Grant Hunter can enlighten us all on for uh, further discussion. Anything from our, our co CEOs, they're, they're also a big part of this. We've